Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting one of my favourite tree blossoms, um, Magnolia, to celebrate reaching the incredible figure of 60,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. When I first started my channel, um, it was just literally a small channel just to kind of try and chart my journey painting um, to give me a bit of a hobby really and now I'm working full-time as an artist um, giving demonstrations here on YouTube and Patreon and selling my paintings in my Etsy shop Owls and Flowers Art and also the recent venture um, making handmade watercolour paints with my daughter and selling them in our shop Morgana Rose Art. So thank you so much. I couldn't have done it without you and I really appreciate your support and your wonderful comments. So today I'm going to be painting um, a painting based on this photograph from Pixabay. The link will be in the description below. As you saw at the beginning, I've changed up the background, but very much kept the, um, the tr magnolia tree itself as it is there in the photograph. So the first thing to do is to um, sketch out lightly in pencil where I want my branches, flowers and magnolia buds to be. And then once I've sketched it out and I'm happy with the placement of all the beautiful um, intertwining branches and a good balance between open magnolia flowers and buds, then I'll begin to go over the sketch with a waterproof fine liner. Now this is my 0.8 Pigma Micron fine liner. Um, it's, it's a lovely smooth um, pen and it works really, really well um, for line and wash. I decided to do a line and wash because I want to define the beautiful shape of these flowers and the buds. Um, the beauty of the magnolia tree, in fact the beauty I think of a lot of flowering trees, is that they flower in the early spring uh, before they have any leaves. And this looks incredible um, for a short period of time. And then as soon as the flowers appear, the, leaf, the leaves sort of break through and eventually obscure a lot of the flowers. Um, but that moment, that few days or week or so, where the flowers are just prominent against the bare branches in the strong and subtle spring light is really attractive. And that's what I want to capture here. So I'm carefully outlining my branches and my buds and my flowers. When I say carefully, I'm keeping my line work quite loose, fairly sort of hit and miss. I don't mind if it's not exact. I'm still looking for a loose painting here, even though I'm defining it very much with the outline. I want to keep it nice and fresh as well, which is why I decided to change up the background from the photograph. Um, I want the white tips and the pinks and purples in the uh, magnolia flowers to really stand out against the background and I was concerned that the the white background I might lose them slightly in my painting so I've decided to paint sort of hazy pink and green um, wet in wet background and to mask out my flowers um, I think that will work well because then the flowers should stand out really well against the background which is kind of implies more blossom and trees in the background. And the final step in my line work is to use my Faber-Castell 1.5mm fine liner to um, get in the dark shadows underneath the branches and some of the flowers and buds just here and there, just to define the dark. With a line and wash, you um, the line work, the ink work gives you the outline, but it also gives you your darkest darks. So those are now defined. Um, my lightest lights will be the areas of unpainted paper and my watercolour washes will give me all my mid-tones and maybe a few darks um, at the base of the flowers. I've um, 
soaked my little detail brush in soap. I've rubbed it through the bristles and that will stop my masking fluid from um, ruining the brush. So now I'm going to carefully paint in all the flowers and all the buds with the masking fluid and then leave it to dry. And here you can see, even though my masking fluid is clear, you can see where it is. Um, once it's completely dry, then I'll take my water mister and I'll give the whole thing a very light spritz so that I've got some wet areas and dry areas which should add a bit of interest to my wash. Now I'm just using Opera Rose and Sap Green, um, Jackson's colours, um, and I'm going to very lightly splash the pink and the green across the page um, and allow the water that's on the page to take the paint and maybe spritz it a little bit more in a minute when I've got a bit more paint on. I don't want too much. I really want a pale wash here. Um, so I'm just putting it on with my um, small Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush, uh, which holds a lot of paint and a lot of water so I can have these lovely clean um, transparent washes with um, quite watery paint. My board is at an angle of about 45 degrees and you can see uh, the paint is running down the page. Once I get enough paint on, I shall lay the board flat um, once it's all run beautifully and got to the position where I like the look of it. The paper I'm using today is slightly different. It's Saunders Waterford High White Paper. It's 100% cotton and a lovely bright white, which should give me some gorgeous uh, bright magnolia petals, um, hopefully. Now I'll lift out a little bit of the wash here and there, dabbing it out with a tissue, um, just to kind of really give me those extra little bits of pale white paper just shining through these transparent washes. Now going back to the high white paper, I used to use Saunders Waterford natural white all the time, but for flower painting I've discovered that it really works so much better if you use a very white paper. And now the finishing touch with my um, synthetic uh, Pro Art fan brush, I'm taking a very sort of inky, watery opera rose and just gently knocking the fan brush against another clean paintbrush to give me some very light areas, delicate areas of spatter that are then diffusing into the wash, but just giving me some slightly darker areas. And I'm happy with that as my background. And I think you can see where the flowers and buds are masked out, how pretty they look against this wash, which will dry back slightly lighter than this. Um, and I'll come back when it's completely dry and continue with the painting. Now here it is, it's all dried beautifully and I've got just the effect that I was looking for. So now it's time to use an eraser or a clean finger to rub away the latex of the masking fluid. Make sure that you have um, wiped off your masking fluid areas carefully because sometimes you can get blobs of paint that stay wet for longer on the latex surface and that can then smudge and create a bit of a mess. Uh, when you try to remove the fluid. Now here it is, you can see that the flowers look really lovely, really fresh and vibrant. So the first thing I'm going to do is with a mixture of sap green, quite a watery one to start with, and I can build up some stronger paint in slightly darker areas. I'm gonna paint in the little sort of uh, sepals or bud coverings at the base of each flower or bud. As I'm right-handed, I'm working from the top and the left side back across the painting um, towards the right and the bottom to make sure that I don't smudge any of these um, wet bud areas as I work. And I can add a slightly darker little touch of paint into the buds here and there to add a bit of shape and form.
so now that's all done i've mixed up a bit of raw umber with a uh, with a, a a little scrap of sap green in it to green it up a bit for these pale brown branches and then using my small calligraphy brush which is what i just used to paint the um the bud coverings um but any small detail brush or fine brush, like a round with a good point, will do the job for painting these flowers. Um, if you're interested in um, a downloadable or printable copy of the pencil sketch and the line work, that will be available on my Patreon, so please follow the link below. So now I'm going to leave it all to dry so that I can freely paint my flowers and buds without worrying about smudging anything. And it's nice and dry and I'm going to use a stronger mix of my Opera Rose to start with. Um, and I'm going to use Quinacridone Purple. That's another Jackson's colour. So all, all the colours here are Jackson's apart from the raw umber, which is a Cotman colour. You can see that I'm kind of keeping an eye on my photograph to make sure that I capture the way the colour is distributed on the flowers and the buds. Um, it's deepest um, nearest the branch and fades through pink and purple um, to white and the edges and the outside petals. If I put too much paint on, I can always quickly dab it off while it's wet. But I am trying to make sure I keep plenty of white of the paper around the edges, in particular, of the open flowers and at the tips of some of the buds. So I'm working backwards and forwards between the two colours, the Opera Rose and the Quin Purple. Because my board's at 45 degrees, the wet paint will naturally run downwards and that actually gives me my darker colours where it pulls up a little bit towards the base of the flower. So this is another instance of where gravity can really help you with your painting because we want the lighter areas across the top of the painting and the darker, more shadowy areas and richer pigment and hues of the flowers at the base. I'm painting here wet paint onto a dry painting so I can take my time, there's no rush. Uh, it's just a really pleasurable thing to do to paint in these really pretty flowers against this pale dappled sunlit background. And of course this, um, this method could be used for all kinds of um, scenes, similar scenes, different types of trees and tree blossoms or different flowers. Um, it's the sun, this sort of sunlit background is a very useful thing to um, be able to do because it's very, very versatile. So here I'm putting in my Opera Rose with a few touches of the Quin Purple. Then I can go in with stronger paint, um, in this case, because it's nice and bright, a nice strong um, mixture of the Quin Purple at the base, just pulling it out across some of the um, petals to look like those really beautiful veins that you get on, on these stunning flowers. Just a few stronger highlights here and there. Remember to take your time with these finishing touches. Um, step back from the painting every now and again and just see where you need a little bit of extra tone. 
but still making sure you preserve enough white to, to really make this painting pop. So that's it, I'm now done. It's time to remove the masking tape. And so I'll um, peel it off, pulling it away from the painting, just in case it was to tear the paper. Um, if I pull it away, then I make sure I don't tear the painting. Once I remove the masking tape, I can see the painting with fresh eyes, with its clean white border, which kind of makes it look as if it's got a frame or a mat or a mount on. And I can see whether or not I think it's finished. And I'm quite happy with this. Um, I really enjoyed the process. Um, and I'm quite pleased. It's my first go at painting magnolias. Um, I'm glad I did a line and wash. It was a really enjoyable process and a great way of um, making these flowers look a little bit more detailed uh, than they actually are. It's quite a simple process um, and one that is very, very enjoyable. So I hope that was helpful and I hope you enjoyed watching it. And again, thanks so much for all your support over the past few years um, and helping me to reach 60,000 subscribers. And thanks again to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.